Hello Virgo, welcome to your weekly tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of March 12th through 18. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I'm providing. Okay. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we have a Prince of Swords. So let's put that into some context with our Dove and Serpent spread. Now, if there is anything that you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments down below. I do read every single comment. Okay. Uh, so now mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're not going to look at this card until the very end of the reading. We're going to leave that right there. And hopefully that'll tie everything together at the end. Okay, so please stick around till the end of the video. Now, Virgo, let's see what we've got. We've got some air, some air, some air. Mm, little earth, fire, and water. More air, more air, more fire, and earth. So we've got um, kind of a lack of water, but the saving grace is in the immediate future, we have a three of cups. So that's that takes care of the water. We do have a lot of air. So I feel like there is um, some, maybe some self-doubt going on. I think that there is a, a little bit of difficulty maintaining a positive attitude. You know what I mean? I think that we really need to focus on positive affirmations, on objective thinking, and perhaps the air is here because we're trying to be objective. We're trying to be unbiased, trying to be rational and reasonable and intellectual about it and not get down into our feelings about this thing. Okay, um, let's find out what's going on because I feel like it's kind of uh, about this relationship that you have uh, with someone. We see a lot of a lot of court cards here, right? The first one that we had is this Prince of Swords. Who is this air sign person in your life? I feel like they're about the same age as you. Uh, I feel like it's a male energy, a masculine energy, and I just feel like there's some kind of almost a disappointment related to them with you. I feel like you're the kind of person that is always very supportive. You try to look at the bright side of things. I think that you're trying to support this person or be there for this person, but it's becoming a little difficult, okay? Um, I think that you're trying to be reasonable and objective, like I said, and you're, you're speaking to them in, in that energy right? Um, it's almost like there's, there's not really a connection there emotionally. You're not really, not really empathizing with them. You're just trying to kind of explain why they should feel differently or something, right? Um, kind of glancing around and seeing what might be going on with them. I feel like they're having difficulties at work or in terms of their employment or getting a job, finding a job, keeping a job perhaps. Because we do have this seven of pentacles uh, crossing the issue. This is like the kind of central thing that's going on with this air sign person. I feel like this is your person. Or this is somebody very close to you. And um, it's almost like you're, you're always having to reassure them. You know, I think they're having a struggle. I think they're not really finding what they're looking for. They maybe are working on some projects or they're trying to find the right job for them or they're, they're trying to manifest some success in their life. It's just not happening, you know? And I feel like you're really, you're really trying to help them and be there for them, but you're doing so in a very like intellectual way, you know? It's like they don't really need, uh, they don't really need a discussion. They just kind of want you there to listen and to console and say, yeah, okay, it's going to be okay. I hear you. It'll be all right. You know, I kind of feel like they want that energy, but you're all, you're in your, you're in your mentation, you're in your, uh, your intellect, you're in your kind of reasonableness. Yes, I said mentation. Um, and, and you're not really down in your feelings about it. You're not really like connecting with them on that emotional level. 
It's just kind of, you're, you're kind of like arguing almost with them. Or they'll tell you how they feel, and you will kind of counter with all of these really rational statements, you know. Um, but I feel like this is the way in which you are approaching this situation. And maybe this is just like, th this person doesn't need you to, uh, to just give them a hug and say it's going to be okay. They need you to tell them, look, you have to do X, Y, and Z. And you have to do it tomorrow and yesterday and the day after uh, in order to achieve something, right? So it's almost like they need you to kind of be the voice of reason, the voice of, you know, intelligent planning. And um, I think with the, with the Queen of Swords here, I, I feel like you're really able to do that. You're able to detach from how you feel in order to do what needs to be done to make the plans, to make the decisions, to communicate effectively, and, and not just kind of wallow in this, this depression or this sadness or this disappointment, okay? I feel like your person is this air sign person, and I feel like they're just having this struggle. I feel like the, the projects that they're working on, the things that they're trying to do are just not connecting, All right? Things are just, don't seem to be coming together. Um, in the recent past, I feel like, I feel like your, um, your approach to situations like this is kind of something that you've, that you learned, um, you know, probably from like childhood or young adulthood, you know what I mean? Um, I think that it's, a rational way to resolve problems. Um, I wonder if it is a an appropriate way to deal with feelings, okay? Um, I think that you're so kind of logical about this and you're so kind of in your head about it that we're not really connecting with how we feel. And this could be one of those situations where that's good. We don't, that's perfect, right? We don't want to just get down in our feelings and then nothing gets accomplished. So you're trying to be the voice of reason. You're trying to be the, the rational person with the answers, you know, with the, with the plans. And this is good, but I think there's a deeper issue here um, with you because this seven of swords in the, in the past, I, I don't think it's recent. I think it's something that's kind of been ongoing. It is this um, avoidance of how we feel, you know? I think that you use your kind of logic to mask how you, you really are feeling sometimes, okay? And one of the reasons why I'm saying that is because of this princess of wands down here at the bottom. This is beneath the surface. These are, let's say, these are your feelings. I know this is a fire card. Just hear me out. Um, the emotional energy that we are kind of cutting ourselves off from. If you look at the path of the dove here from the overhead, we see all of this air over here that is really cutting us off from this water and this fire. You know, these are kind of over here by themselves and all of this water here is kind of pushing these away. So we got our sword out and we're just, we're cutting down any, any kind of emotion, any kind of feeling that bubbles up represented by this princess it starts to make itself known it starts to kind of activate you push it down you got that sword out and you're just saying no i've got to be logical reasonable i've got to keep my wits about me you know so this princess of wands is gaining strength and this is um the emotional uh energy Right, these, it's a fire card. It's not the cups for, you know, your, the way that you feel. This is um, the energy, the activity, the potential energy of that feeling, of those feelings of your emotional body, right? So this is um, all of that water energy, all of the emotions kind of turned into gasoline, right? And I think that it's starting to make itself known more and more. Um, when we go, go to the path of the serpent here, there's a little bit more of that kind of activity that we're starting to see. Okay, So I feel like you've got this situation going on with this air sign person, and it's an opportunity for you to really look within and see if you are maybe cutting yourself off from your emotions a little bit too much. 
okay? Now, I'm not trying to offend anyone or, you know, I'm not trying to become too familiar. I don't know you. But with this fire energy down below here, I think it's something that you feel, right? I think you feel maybe like a stomach ache or something. And that is like the fire energy, the emotional energy that's becoming volatile, okay? The emotions, the water, it's yielding, it's passive, it's adaptable, right? It's, it's water. But this is fire down here. So this is creating like that knot in your stomach. It's creating that like acid stomach, you know, the ulcer kind of feeling. And it's starting to make itself known. It's starting to kind of bubble up. You're starting to feel it more. Maybe you got the acid reflux. Maybe, um, maybe you're aware that sometimes your emotions creep up in a way that is kind of unexpected. Okay, and it's in those moments that we really can learn a lot about ourselves. Those moments where our emotions just kind of come out in something we say or something we do or a mannerism or, you know what I mean, some histrionics. And we're just afterward, we're like, wow, I didn't, like, that's not me. I don't know why I did that. That's the princess of wands that's down there trying to get out. Okay, starting to make some moves. Um, but anyway, on the horizontal plane, there is this situation with your air sign person. And in the immediate future, we see a three of cups. So I think that you are going to transition into this more uh, nurturing, caring, supportive, uh, consoling, um, compassionate kind of energy, right? It's, it's um, your choice, obviously, you know, if you want to kind of intentionally activate this water energy. This is the only water we see here, okay? It's the only water in the in the spread. So this, it's either you take this or you leave it. You either do or you don't. Um, and you could choose to go a more compassionate route. You, the, you know, you can be objective. You can be, uh, you can have a plan. You could be logical. You can have a discussion with this person. But I think what they really need is just a hug and just say, it's going to be okay. I'm here for you. Whatever you need, it's going to be okay. You know? Um, give them an opportunity to cry a little bit, right? I mean, this kind of the, the Three of Cups is usually a happy card, celebration. I think it's the release of this emotions, the release of this energy that really needs to happen. I think for both of you, I don't think just for the air sign person, I think both of you kind of need this, you know? To reconnect, to reactivate this water energy. I think this is going to be important, especially as we go to the path of the serpent, because the first thing we see is this ten of swords. I think if you have this cathartic kind of, you know, let the tears flow moment, it's almost like a joyful kind of moment. It's a release. It's a it's a good feeling here. I think you're going to understand the um, the limitations to this logical thinking. You know, the ten of swords here. It's the extent of the air energy. I think our mind, our intellect, our logical thinking can only take us so far can only really take us so far, okay? And I think you're recognizing that. Um, I think you're, you're beginning to see that there are other methods and modes of communication. Uh, we saw so much air on the path of the dove, and there's still more air on the path of the serpent, right? So it's just, you're trying to get out of this purely logical left brain mode. There are other ways of communicating, okay? Which we see with these court cards that are coming up. But first of all, in your environment, we've got this four of swords. So one of your greatest assets, I think, is your ability to resolve conflict. You can kind of, uh, you know, you can talk yourself out of any situation, uh, any kind of crisis going on at home or at work, personal life, private life, professional life, anything that's going on, you can come in and you can talk it through and everybody will come to a, a kind of uh, amicable win-win kind of solution and resolution to it, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if you are in the, the field of law or um, if you're a lawyer or a paralegal or you work in the legal industry somewhere uh, or some kind of a communications person, some kind of a conflict, you know, resolution, hostage negotiator, something like that, okay. I feel that strongly about you. And um, I do also want to point out that there are no major arcana in this spread right now. Okay. I don't know if you noticed that. I forget if I mentioned that. 
there are no major arcana cards here. So I feel like this is something that's very personal going on with you. And it's something that is dealing directly with your kind of like personality, your, your energy and, and kind of how you've been living your life. Not really about what's happening in your life. What are the outside forces coming in? Again, no major arcana. These are about some shifts in your own internal world, your own internal energies. Okay. Um, the conflict resolution, hostage negotiation. I think you're very skilled in that. I think that you um, are achieving that in this situation. Like you, I think you've already kind of done that with this air sign person. You've rationalized it, explained it. It's logical. There's a plan. Now they just need that hug and they need to cry it out, right? And that's, we're got to focus on that three of cups. So the next thing is this knight of wands, fire on fire on fire on fire. This is intense, fiery energy. Um, this is your fears, worries, and concerns. I think this is really the natural growth of this princess of wands. If we don't in some way let this energy out, it's going to run amok. Uh, this horse is going to just gallop away with force and fire in a fury and carry you along with it okay uh this is and this is your fear this is that uh once you kind of open the gates once the the race has begun and you've kind of you know you've opened the starting gates um you're worried that this is going to really take off and get carried away you know you're worried that your emotions are going to flow out unchecked uncontrolled you know it's the horse that's taking off with the rider and that's your, that's your concern. And I think that's one reason why we keep the princess of, sword, of uh, wands um, under guard with all of these swords, right? Because we don't want it to run crazy and just burn the entire village down. I'm trying to keep it in check, you know, because this is the, uh, the kind of worst case scenario about it, you know. Uh, the final card on the path of the serpent is this queen of discs. This is the watery aspect of the earth. This is a real kind of um, flow. You know, this is like being able to take this situation, right? Whatever's going on in the, the earth plane, the kind of horizontal world, what's going on around me. You're able to take that situation and really connect with it on that emotional, almost intuitive, spiritual kind of level, right? And that's the way that you are learning to communicate. You know, you still will use words and gestures and, you know, maybe you talk with your hands like I do a little bit, um, and body language, you know. But um, it's prompted not by this kind of logical left brain swords air energy. It's prompted by your intuition, by your spirit you know, and I think that puts you more and more in touch with this water energy, knowing when to just give someone a hug and say, it's going to be okay. Let them cry on your shoulder, right? Rather than trying to give them a lecture or something, you know, lectures still have their place, but you're learning through this intuitive water energy in this queen of pentacles, what to use, how, what, and where, you know, it's a little bit more of an intuitive response to situations rather than just all air, all day, all the time. More of an intuitive response to the environment around us. Okay. Uh, mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. I've been talking a lot about the air energy and its potential to really um, kind of agitate and aggravate this fire energy. And what we really want is the water. So I see a fire water kind of duality here. Okay, so I really think this is going to be the art or temperance card um, to show us that we can take all of this fiery potential. We can take this gasoline, right, and we can convert it back into a cooling, refreshing spiritual water, an elixir of life, right? Going from gasoline to holy water. I think that's what we're working on. I think this is going to be the art or temperance card. And yes, art or temperance card here, showing that we, we are able to transmute this. It's not just gasoline, gasoline, gasoline. We can turn it into holy water. Okay. 
And I think this is a real confirmation of the work that we're doing. And this, you know, um, fire and, and water together, well, it makes steam, right? It's an airy kind of thing. Uh, so there is still that, that air component, but the air in this case is not just logical left brain. The air that's produced by this card is uh, spiritualized air. You know, it's steam. It's um, the intuitive communication, right? You still have to use words and letters and gestures and body language and so forth. Um, but it's a more intuitive understanding of that and a more kind of spiritual motivation Right? You're being kind of led by your, by your soul rather than just your kind of logic left brain. You know? So this is a very important confirmation card. And I think this is going to be a very uh, productive and helpful week for you. It seems like there is this challenge with this air sign person. But through this person's you know, difficulty and your experience with them, you're really learning a lot about yourself. And I think you're very focused on your spiritual growth. And I thank you for being here and watching this tarot reading. It really is my honor to be able to read these cards for you uh, every week. We're going to do an extended. Uh, if you want to check out the extended, you have to become a member to the channel. Okay. To do that, you click on the link that's up here. Uh, doing that will give you access to all of the extended readings. We do the extendeds for every sign, uh, every week, and the monthly readings as well. And once you join the channel, you can have access to all of those, not just for Virgo, but for all signs. Okay. Um, but I want to thank you again for letting me read for you today. This was your weekly reading for March 12 through 18 on Dove and Serpent Tarot.